I'm Joey. I'm Jason. And this is Metal Monster Review. Review. Today, we're going to get back to some universal classic monster movies here. And what one we're going to do here is we're going to do the 1941 movie, The Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, this is a killer movie. And a little bit about this here, real quick here is... Lon Chaney Sr. worked for in the horror industry. He was the Phantom of the Opera from 1925. He played in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, The Monster, The Unknown. He's done a lot in horror. And now his son is following in his footsteps. And his son is worked with Jack Pierce on here and created a really killer look in which laid a lot of groundwork for werewolf movies even though Werewolf of London came out about six, seven years earlier, but still I think this might be the defining moment for werewolf transformations and the werewolf movie as a genre. So we're going to talk about the 1941 movie, The Wolfman. Now, Jason, where did you see The Wolfman for the first time? Actually, I think I, the first time I seen it was... Whenever AMC was, it was during Halloween, AMC always runs older horror movies. I think that's the first time I've seen it. And this movie, it really hooked me because personally, this is for the Universal Monster movies. It's either The Wolfman or The Creature from the Black Lagoon is my, my top two favorite Universal and Monster movies. You can't movies. really go wrong because I do love my Universal horror for sure, and I know we've reviewed Creature from the Black Lagoon. We've done a lot of Universal movies. We've done The Invisible Man, Creature, uh, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and it, it feels good to be doing this one because, you know what I mean, this one is definitely worth watching and talking about. Um, basic plot here that you got going on is this. Now, before I start talking, there are spoilers ahead. Just throwing that out there. I know if you've watched the show before, we, we always mention that, but you know, I don't want to ruin it for you, but I want to give you a heads up now. You have Lon Chaney Jr., who is coming home back to the Talbot Castle, and he's there because his brother was killed in a hunting accident shortly beforehand, so he's there with the family now. And another thing that kind of makes these universal movies that go full circle is sometimes you'll see some returning cast members from different movies. And if you notice who plays Larry Talbot's father is Claude Rains, who is the voice of The Invisible Man and later did the remake of The Phantom of the Opera, which was Lon Chaney Sr.'s iconic role. So you see how things come full circle here. But basically now, he is there, and he's there visiting with the family, and he has a, kind of a new interest. You know, he sees a, you know, a, a girl that just catches his interest, who is Evelyn Anchors. Her name is Gwen. So he goes there, he kind of kind of pursues her, tries to smooth her over, and they end up going to see a fortune teller, played by Bela Lugosi, who was Dracula. And they feel a little bit uneasy when their friend is getting their fortune told by Bela, the fortune teller. And he, he noticed that he looked at their hand and saw a pentagram, which is supposed to be the sign of the wolf and indicating their next victim. So Bela ends up attacking, but he's in wolf form, attacking uh, Lon Chaney and Evelyn Anker's friend, Jenny, Lon Chaney to the rescue gets bit and horror history is made. <laughs> Jason, what? would you like to talk a little bit about this? I'm going on and on. No, what makes this movie a little different than some of the other Universal movies is this is sort of, if you want to say, like a sort of psychological thriller. Yes. Because like they don't believe believe he's a werewolf. And you're watching it, you might even think too, it's like, Maybe he's not a werewolf. He's just imagining all this, all this stuff. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying there. And basically, they're trying to put in his head like this is all in your head. You know, there's no way you can believe you're a wolf, but you don't physically turn into a wolf. And I like how you brought that up. That's an interesting little point there. You get that psychological. Yeah, I thought aspect. that was cool about it. Then it's a little. I mean, this one's 
This one pretty much set the tones for werewolf movies, but this one's slightly a little different. Because what, what I got from this movie is, like, the autumn moon is the strongest. So, it's every night he turns into a werewolf. He just don't, he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need the full moon. Because the autumn moon, according to this, is the strongest. So, every night in autumn, he turns into a werewolf. Because he turns in consecutive days in a row. You know what? Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, but, no, I, I totally dig this. And you're right here because... There's a scene in the movie where he's worried about, you know, is he a wolf or not? And his father, in a rational manner, ties him to a chair. <laughs> well, hell, we're going to beat this one way or another. We're going to go out for a few hours, grab a cheeseburger, maybe see a movie, and we hope you're still tied to this chair when we come back. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, come least, on, like, who the I hell mean, does that? At least stay there. Yeah. I mean, Dad, take the cane, would you? Take the silver <laughs> cane, God's would sake, you? take the cane. You know, and it's like, well, hey, we're just going to go out for dinner and see a movie. Hopefully you're here when we come <laughs> back, you know. But if you do leave, don't mess up the carpet. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, I thought that was a little odd, but hey, let's just rock and roll with it. You know what I mean? But that doesn't take away from anything from this film because there's a lot of really cool atmospheric horror and I love the fog and the creepy music. Uh, what a killer musical score in the beginning, too. You know what I mean? I really enjoyed that. Um, what are some of your favorite scenes out of The Wolfman? Well... I think my, my favorite scene is whenever he's the transformation. I love when he goes to his feet and he like, he put, he puts his hands on his head like that. <laughs> you know how that was done? They would actually apply a little bit of makeup, photograph it, and then continue on. Put a little more makeup on and then photograph it again to make it seem like it's more of a progressive shot. Which I thought that was pretty clever, you know what I mean, for a 1941 technique, you know what I mean, that was pretty clever. And another interesting thing was it took over six hours to put in that makeup. Jack Pierce really did a lot of amazing work. And I know throughout this show when we do universal horror movies, you know, we always mention Jack Pierce because really he's, he's brought these monsters to life. You know, he did the, the makeup for the Frankenstein monster, the mummy, the wolf man. And this is all his work. And it's almost become synonymous with Halloween. Because you'll go to some Halloween party and somebody's wearing a wolf man mask or, you know, uh, painting their face green trying to be the Frankenstein monster. But this all came from Jack Pierce. And that's something he doesn't get enough credit I think for. He, I think he did an amazing job on the special effects. Oh, without know, a doubt. Before we wanted to talk about this, I wanted to listen to what other people have to say about the movie. And, and some people were dissing the, the effects, like the Wolfman didn't look, he should have had a bigger snout and all that. And But tell you what, man, I, I, I love this look. I yeah, love it. It, it is a cool it's, look. It's, it's human, wolfy. I'm, I'm not a big fan of these werewolf movies when, when the transformation, they just turn into a fucking dog. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I, I, I'm not. I'm not into that. I, I think this this movie. He looks awesome. He's a cross. He's, he's he's a mix between. Yeah, I get that without a doubt. And um, like I said, this movie laid a lot of foreground for werewolf movies to come. Do I think this is without a doubt the best werewolf movie? No, and I think in a later review we might talk about what I personally feel is the best werewolf movie. But this one here is definitely worth a watch because yeah, it's, this it's, not, it's not the best work. werewolf movie, but it, it set the standards. Mm -hmm. And like I said I think the 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 Wolfman looks awesome. I think what 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 what, what gravitates me more to this movie is being one of my favorite Universal movies is. It's the fact when this poor man changes, he has no no control over his body. So when he changes, whatever the hell he does, he has no recognition of it. He can't control it or nothing. I mean, you got other other universal monsters where they they know what the monster knows what they're doing and all that. But this poor man, he wakes up like, oh, what the hell happened? It's almost yeah. like that human factor because. When he gets up in the morning, he finds that he, he's got dirt all over his bed sheets, dirt on the windowsill, all over his feet. Where in the hell was I last night? Waking up dazed and confused, made a little Led Zeppelin reference there, but 
you know, he gets up, he has no idea where he is, and then everybody's saying, oh, well, somebody was murdered last night, and we're thinking it was the wolf, and it came right to the door here, right outside. And which is making him think, does he turn into a wolf, or is he a crazed killer? Or, and that gets back into that psychological aspect that we were talking about just a few moments ago. I mean, that's, that's what caught me with this movie. Just the, this the, I, I got feelings, too, and I couldn't imagine having something like this happen to me, taking somebody's life and you have no recognition of it or nothing. It's just, it, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, just, hey, beware the moon. You know what I mean? And be sure to take that uh, silver cane and be sure to subscribe to Metal and Monster Reviews. I'm Joey. I'm Jason. And this is Metal Monster Review. Review.